This morning, I'd like us to read the book of Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Tell your neighbor, it's the year of threshing mountains. Hallelujah. Zechariah, chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Amen. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. This is the Lord's word coming to Zerubbabel. And uh, at this juncture, Zerubbabel is the governor. And he, they have just come from captivity. They are trying to rebuild their city. They are trying to rebuild the temple. Bona Sifiwe. Then we want to read Isaiah chapter 41 verse 15. Actually, we can start from verse 14 to 15. Now, Isaiah which is our key scripture this year. Fear not, you warm Jacob, you men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord and your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for your word. We know that your word is powerful. Your word is settled in heaven. Your word can be able to break rocks, can be able to break cedars, even cedars of Lebanon. And Father, this morning, as we look through your word, we pray that it will penetrate into our hearts, it will penetrate into our situations, and that, Lord, at the end of the day, Things are going to turn around in our lives, in our nation, in our families, in our church, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord is addressing Zerubbabel, whom, like I said, was a governor. They had been in captivity, and during the reign of King Cyrus, if you'll have time, you can go and read the book of Ezra, chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6. You will get the full story that I'm trying to narrate here today. Ezra 4, 5, and 6. And so as he is taken leadership, they have gone back to their land so that they can do some reconstruction because their nation, as it were, because of captivity, their, their captivity, their nation was in ruins. And as he begins building the nation, the Bible says in the book of Ezra, chapter 4, verse 2, that the very people who had uh, destroyed their land, some of them gathered together. And they went to Zerubbabel and to Joshua. During that time, Joshua was the king. Zerub Zerubbabel was the king and Joshua was the priest. And they have gone to Zerubbabel and Joshua, and they are telling them, why won't you allow us to build together with you? It's as, as, as if the enemy now is trying to partner with them so that they can reconstruct the temple. And definitely you and I know that when there is an enemy in the camp, that work cannot progress. And so they knew that for them to bring down the work of the Lord, they could not work from outside. They needed to be inside so that the work will be accomplished. And so they have gone to Zerubbabel and they have gone to Joshua and they are telling them, invite us so that we can be able to build this building that you're building together. Thank you so much. Maybe we can read that. They came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the father's houses and said to them, let us build with you for we seek your God as you do. And we have sacrificed to him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, who, who, who brought us here. Verse 3. 
But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the heads of the father's houses of Israel said to them, you may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build the, the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. So they are responding to the enemy who is saying we too have been sacrificing together with you as it were they are trying to bring in deception in the camp so that Joshua and Zerubbabel can be able to admit them then they can do the work of destruction while they are inside just like we normally look at some of the thefts that happen and you look at the circumstances surrounding and you're able to say this was an inside job. That's what they wanted to do. And Je Zerubbabel and Joshua were wise enough to tell them, you cannot participate in this that we have been commanded to do. As you continue reading that chapter, then these people got so mad and so angry, and they decided that they were going to oppose Zerubbabel. They were going to oppose Joshua throughout their work. And so they went to the king who had been there because by this time that Zerubbabel is building the temple, by this time King Cyrus has already ceased to be king and another king has taken over. And so they are going back to this king and they are telling them that the Israelites are trying to construct the temple against the will of the Babylonians. But when the Israelites were, um, were, uh, were brought or rather were called by the king, they carried all the papers, the evidence which they had been given by King Cyrus to go and build. And they presented it before the king who was there at that time. And they said, this is it. This is what we were told by the previous king who was in this place. But it was not an easy task because... By the time they were going, already the king had commanded them to seize the work that was being done. So the work had stalled. There was a stalemate. There was a siege as it were. Why? Because the enemy realized that he could not bring it down. And no, now the story that we've just read in the book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 to 7 is the backdrop is what I'm trying to give you. So Zerubbabel has really been disturbed, being distracted and everything. And the Lord steps into the scene and is telling him in verse 6. The Lord is telling him in verse 6. He's telling him in verse 6. Um, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but my, by my spirit says the Lord. In other words, now can you step aside because who these people are fighting is not you, it is me. So from today, henceforth, it is no longer going to be by power, it is no longer going to be by might, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord. There are certain things that at times we go through in life, certain mountains that have been right or rather facing us throughout our lives and we have been fighting all along. We have tried just like Zerubbabel and Joshua had tried and nothing was working as it were. And today I can hear the Lord saying that it is not by might, neither by power, but it is by my spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. It could be a family issue. It could be something generational that has been pursuing you and you have done all you know how to do humanly until you're almost throwing in the towel. This morning I came to tell you that it is not by your might, it is not by your muscle, but it is by the spirit of the Lord. If only you'd step aside and begin concentrating on the Lord. If only you'd step aside and begin tiring in the place of prayer, the Lord is saying, it is by my spirit. And so, in verse 7, the Lord turns around after giving the word to Zerubbabel, the Lord turns around in verse 7 and he's asking, who are you? In our current language, he would ask, who do you think you are? He's asking this mountain, who do you think you are? Oh, great mountain with sarcasm. Who do you think you are? And he's now addressing the mountain. 
Because Zerubbabel has already stepped aside. After being told it's not by might, neither by power, he has stepped aside now and the Lord now has come into the scene and is beginning to address the mountain on his behalf and is beginning to say, oh you great mountain, or oh you mountain that has been imagining you're so great, who are you? Can you tell me your name, oh mountain? And this morning, this is what the Lord is asking, those mountains that have been in our lives and if we can just join him and ask them, mountain, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Because they keep presenting themselves every day. They keep presenting. So who are you, O great mountain before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain. Hallelujah. And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. few years ago, I think it was in the year 2016, in the month of um, May, no women are normally accused to always be accurate about time. Unakumbukaga kabisa mpaka saa, wanasifiwe. So it was in the month of May, and it was on the 28th. And so I was praying about something during that season. And I went to bed that night, and as I went to bed that night, I had a very wild dream. And in the wild dream, I started fighting with something that looked so ugly. And we battled and we battled. And it was huge, very huge. Definitely bigger than I. And it looked so ugly and so scary. So we battled and battled in the dream. And then afterwards, it withdrew from me. And then looked at me straight in the eye and asked me, do you know who I am? And I asked him, so who do you think you are? You know? So who do you think you are? And then he gave me a very strange name. My name is so and so. And I am the God of this place. And I want you to let you know that you cannot operate in this place. And I told him the blood of Jesus is against you. In this very place I will operate in Jesus name. Then I woke up. It was 4 a.m. And I got straight into prayer. There are certain mountains that have been presenting themselves in our lives. In our families here in ear out. We have been able to call them our own maybe because we have been thinking that because our mothers went through them, our fathers went through them, therefore it is okay and it is natural for them to uh, for us to go through them. This morning we want to stand and say who do you think you are, oh great mountain? Because before the Lord and before the Lord who is strengthening me, today you are going to be a plain in Jesus name. Hallelujah. You look at your family and I want you as we are speaking, I want you to begin asking them, who are you? Because when you know the name, realize this is a mountain that is being addressed. And the version we've just read is saying, who are you? Meaning it is a personality. It is a being. It might not just be the mountain that we are seeing. It might not just be the husband that has been bringing you trouble. It is not just the wife who has been bringing you trouble. It is not just the children who have been bringing you trouble. It is now necessary for you to move beyond that son of yours who has been in drugs. Look beyond them and begin asking, who are you, O oh great mountain? Who are you, O oh great mountain? You who has been causing my son to be in drugs, can you please tell me your name today? And it gets to a point when you are annoyed as a mother. You are saying this is enough today. Last week, our bishop was teaching us and he told us, call out your, your mountain. And I remember us rising up and we shouted our mountains. We screamed out our mountains. Why? Because the presence of the Lord was here. And maybe you are here, you were not there last week. Or maybe you are here, you only shouted one. Today again, we want to do the same thing. And I want you to think, what is this that has been troubling you? You may not be able to know it real nice. But you're going to say, who are you, oh mountain? Hallelujah. You have disturbed my marriage enough. Who are you, O oh mountain? You have caused me to walk in lack all this while. Who are you, O oh mountain? 
Marriages never work in my place. Who are you, O oh mountain? Because until you know the name of something, you cannot address it. Hallelujah. You cannot address it. A time came when Jesus was crossing to the other side of the lake. And when he crossed over after the storm that was in the lake, a man appeared from the tomb and came. And the first thing that Jesus did was to ask the name. And he said, we are legion. Then he was able to deal with it. Why am I saying that? There are times when we deal with the wrong things. There are times when we face the wrong things and we start fighting the wrong things and we fight those wrong things the wrong way. But in this year of threshing the mountains, this is what we are saying. We want every mountain in our lives to identify themselves. Identify yourself. Who are you, O oh great mountain? Now, what do mountains normally do? Mountains stand in the way of our progress. Mountains stand in the way of our progress. And it is very easy for us to say that we will evade that mountain. That when I'm seeing there's a mountain in front of me, instead of facing it head on, I can decide to walk around it or I can decide to jump. That is in case I have the energy. But I want to tell you that if you go around it, it will still be left standing strong. And it will still disturb your family members those who are coming after you. And so that necessitates the threshing of the mountain. So that by the time Umepita Hapo, in a Julikana Kwamba, a child of God was here, a child of God passed, and they were able to level these mountains so that when your children and your children's children will be coming, they won't fight the same battles you fought. Hallelujah. I normally tell my children, I have fought certain battles. We have fought certain battles as a couple. And so I keep telling them, these battles you will not fight. Because we have already fought them and they are already down. They are dead as it were. They will never catch up with you. Hallelujah. But if you evade the mountain, it will be waiting for your son. It will be waiting for your daughter. And so this morning, what we are here to do is to get to know who is this mountain. And you're not asking with fear. You're asking with strength. Who do you think you are, O oh great mountain? You shall be level in the year 2024. You shall be level on the 21st of January 2024. There are certain mountains that must be leveled today even as we rise up and we speak to them because it's after the mountain identified themselves that the Lord is saying before Zerubbabel you are going to be a level play. Hallelujah. When you know the name of the mountain then you are able to subject it to the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are able to subject it to the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the name of Jesus is way higher than any other name. Hallelujah. It is a name that is greater than Luanda Magere. It is a name that is greater than Agekoyo and Mumbi. One as if you It is a name which if you subject any other name... They have to bow. And so who are you, great mountain? Standing against my destiny. Who are you, great mountain? Standing in the pathway of my progress. Who are you, great mountain? Standing in the path of my family's prosperity. Who are you, great mountain? 
in every areas of our lives in the year 2024. Even as we are doing these 40 days of prayer and fasting, yes, we are giving us prayer points. And yes, it is good to pray them. But after you have prayed the church prayer points, it's up to you to begin calling out the mountains in your life so that by the time we are finishing the 40 days, you will have addressed them one after the other and they will be down under your feet. Hallelujah. And so who are you, great mountain? You are telling the great mountains, expose yourself. Expose yourself yourself. Every mysterious and identify caller in our lives must always identify themselves. Personally, when I get a call, (coughs) when I get a call, when I get an identified caller, I'll say, hello, hello. And the first thing I will ask, ni nani muenzangu? wanasifiwe. Ni nani mwenzangu? Ili tusianze kupeana story. Yet it is the wrong person they are trying to give that story. So ni nani mwenzangu? You who is knocking at my door of destiny. Ni nani mwenzangu? Wanaisu asifiwe. You who is knocking at the door of my children. Ni nani mwenzangu? And it does not matter whether that child has gone to 20 what years to 30 years if the enemy is trying to mess up with them. Because you know what? To my mother, if she were alive today, I am still her child. Hallelujah. So, Unauliza, who are you? Identify yourself by name. To some of us, the mountains that we need identified are barrenness. Anything you touch to do dies. Umejaribu biashara imekufa. Uka ingia ndoa ikakufa. Anything that you touch just dies. Barrenness. Another kind of mountain is stagnation. You have moved on the same spot for so long and the Lord is saying this day that you have tarried here enough. It is time to break camp and move ahead. So we are going to address stagnation. Some other mountains that we need to address are sicknesses. Sicknesses. You have gone to the doctors. Wamekupima, wamekupima, mpaka wanakuuliza. Kwenu kuna hii ugonjwa. And you're busy saying yes, inakuwaga. Then they tell you, then you will manage it for the entire life. Sicknesses. Poverty. You know? The enemy of poverty, I normally tell my children that there's a difference between lack and poverty. Poverty is a spirit. Lack you may lack today, but tomorrow you will get. So poverty is a spirit. And when someone is poor, they can be given a million today, but in a month's time they have nothing. Because it is a spirit. You cannot have wisdom to know how to multiply the little that you have been given. So constantly whether you are given in billions because the spirit of poverty or the mountain of poverty is constantly with you, you can never progress. The enemy of confusion. Confusion. And many more enemies as per who is sitting in this place. And what we are saying is that the Bible is telling us in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 15, that the Lord is going to help us. He is going to make us into a threshing sledge with new sharp teeth so that we can thresh the mountains. Hallelujah. I was looking at it and wondering, just like I was asking the people in the midweek service, kigunyo inakuwaga na meno? Ask your name. I know. Kwa meno. Kigunyo is a kikuyu word. What is the Kiswahili word or English? I know in English it's a worm. Does it have teeth? I am not. Sijawai yona meno zake. But the Lord is saying, you worm Jacob, I am going to transform you. I am going to make you into a threshing sledge with new sharp teeth. 
And as I looked at that, I was wondering, what could be these teeth that the Lord is saying he is going to give me? He is going to give you. And what came into my mind is that the Bible says that the word of the Lord is sharper than a two-edged sword. He is going to give us his word that will give us teeth. This word is what we are going to use to thresh the mountains. It is not physical teeth. It is the word of the Lord. We will use it to thresh the mountains and beat them small. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord. That in case there is barrenness, there is Causing you to struggle. Then the Bible says in Exodus chapter 23 verse 26. In your land no woman will have a miscarriage or be without children. I will give you long lives. One has a feeling. In other words, if there is anything we need to do so that these teeth will be given to us by the Lord. Then we have to put the word of the Lord very close to us in the year 2024. We must know the word. Hallelujah. We must hide, in, hide the word. David says in the book of uh, Psalms, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. The word of the Lord. The Bible says again in the book of Psalms that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God is a hammer. It will beat the mountains small. The word of God is a sword. It will thresh everything that needs threshing. And so in the year 2024, for us to be able to deal with those mountains that are going to identify themselves in our lives, we will need the word of God combined with faith. Hallelujah. The word of God combined with faith. So that you can speak this word of God and cause it to become. You can cause it to become the word of God. It is the word of God that will remove barrenness in our lives. It is the word of God that will remove unfruitfulness in our workplaces. It is the word of God that will cause our children to perform well in school. Remember the word of the Lord says that the memory of the righteous is blessed. That is God's word. Hallelujah. It is the word of God that will help us maneuver through the economy of this nation. That when other people are saying there is a down sitting, God is going to cause us to have an uprising and our children will not be sent out of school. We will have address all those mountains using the word of God. Hallelujah. The word of God. One of the things that will help us. The second thing that will help us is prayer in this year. Prayer in the name of Jesus. That you'll be able to address those mountains using the word and using prayer. There are certain mountains that you do not fight with the people. Mm -mm. You get to the place of prayer. Look for an hour. Look for two hours. Deal with those things in the place of prayer. It's like that when Ukitoke is there in the physical realm, the Lord has already given you the territory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The mountains of influence will be able to take them when we pray and whatever God gives us as a revelation in the place of prayer, we move out and we implement them. Hallelujah. If we want to come to an end, and this is what we are saying. Who are you, O oh great mountain? Who are you, O oh great mountain? The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 11, I think it's verse 22 to 23, that you shall say to this mountain, be thou moved and be cast into the sea and it shall obey. Do we have a brother somewhere or a sister somewhere here this morning who has had a mountain confronting them 
for the longest time period. Today is the day to tell it. Be cast into the sea. Today is the day to tell it. You have to be threshed to the ground. Today is the day to tell it. The Lord has given you power and authority. Many times, mountains are able to stand before us because we do not know how to use the power and the authority. Hallelujah. And so as we rise up on our feet this morning, I want you to ask your mountains what they are called. Who are you, mountain? And you're not asking with gentleness. You're asking because you have power inside of you. Who are you, O mountain? To terrorize my children. Who are you, O mountain? To keep terrorizing my husband with alcohol. Who are you, O mountain, to keep terrorizing me in my workplace? Who are you, O mountain? I want someone to be annoyed today and just tell the mountain, who are you? And after they have been identified, you are going to call them by name and you are going to cast them into the sea in the name of Jesus Christ. As you walk out of this sanctuary this morning, you are not going back with those mountains. No, you are going out when you are ready victorious in the name of Jesus. If I were you, I'd begin addressing those mountains one after another. The mountains of stagnation, the mountain of delay, the mountain of sickness and disease, the mountain of barrenness, the mountain of poverty, that mountain that has been causing you sleepless nights that mountain that has been causing you your tears every time you keep crying crying because you do not know what to do as it were you want to almost throw the towel in today we are decreeing and declaring those mountains have to let go in the mighty name of Jesus those mountains have to let go in the precious name of Jesus Christ you could have been a warm people have looked down on you it doesn't matter you could be coming from the list of the tribes like Gideon was coming from the list of the tribes but I want to tell you that it doesn't matter where you're coming from what matters is that the Lord has taken over the battle the Lord is saying it's not by might it's not by power but it is by your spirit says the Lord he is saying I will help you he is saying I am making you into a new threshing sled with sharp teeth in the name of Jesus someone just call on the name of the Lord decree and declare this marks an end of these struggles in my family this marks an end of my struggles as a person in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I want to tell you today that as you go back home you are not going to fight with that husband it is not your husband who is the problem it is not your wife who is not is the problem it is not your boss who is the problem neither is it your children who are problem it is not that colleague of yours who is a problem it is a mountain it is a spirit and that's why we are addressing it we are asking it who are you who do you think you are who do you think you are oh great mountain today you have to come down in the name of Jesus you have to come down in the name of Jesus you're telling it expose yourself expose yourself today you've been hiding for too long behind my people behind my loved ones expose yourself in Jesus name and you will be thrashed in the name of Jesus father we want to give you praise we want to give you praise oh God because you've given us power and authority you've given us power and authority to trample upon snakes to trample upon scorpions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ oh God we want to give you praise and we want to give you honor we call forth Jehovah God for the salvation of our children this morning we call forth my father for the salvation of God of our loved ones we decree and declare that the mountains of stagnation are letting us go in Jesus name the mountain of stagnation we command you to be removed and be thrown into the sea in the name of Jesus the mountain of cancer be removed now 
now and be thrown into the sea. The mountain of Fibroids be removed this morning and be thrown into the sea. The mountain of diabetes be removed this morning and be thrown into the sea. The mountains of hypertension be removed today and be thrown into the sea. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, you have no authority here. You cannot stand in the way of our progress. You cannot stand in the way of our destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command you to be removed. We command you to be leveled into a plane. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise and we give you glory, Jehovah. We thank you, we thank you because you have been good. Oh God, we give you glory. We give you glory today as we walk out of this sanctuary. We decree and declare the Lord, all the mountains are being leveled. All the mountains that have identified themselves this morning are being leveled in the name of Jesus. They are being leveled in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh yes, they are being leveled this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, be exalted and be magnified, oh God. Be exalted, my God, for taking over our battle. Be exalted, King in glory, for fighting on our behalf. Be exalted for making us into a threshing sledge. Be exalted, my King and my Lord. We worship you, Jesus, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.